It was after my buddy's 22nd birthday party. It was late, probably 2 a.m. I was driving home and I was feeling dangerously drowsy. I should have gotten an Uber, but I'd always been confident about my driving skills. I knew I could make a 10 minute drive, no problem. But I guess that's why they call them accidents. When I woke up, my girlfriend was asleep on a chair beside my hospital bed, but everything looked weird. The windows were shut and boarded up, and my girl looked entirely different. When she woke up, I asked her a question that was bugging me. How long? My girlfriend started to cry. Th three years. Hi, I'm Will, and I woke up from a three-year coma only to find out that I'm the last surviving man in my country. If you're not subscribed yet, subscribe to the channel and give this video a thumbs up. Watch till the end and comment your title ideas for the follow-up of the story, or for a different one. We'll pick the most unique ideas. If you can't think of a title, make sure to like the ideas you prefer in the community section. And enjoy the video. What? Wait. No. Are you sure? Haley smiled through her tears and planted a kiss on my hand. You were in a coma for three years. I... We all thought you weren't gonna make it. But here you are. You can't believe how happy I am. How happy everyone will be. By that, I thought she meant my family, my buddies. Everyone I left behind when my car crashed into a tree three years ago. But when she finally wheeled me out of that dark hospital room, what greeted me was an unrecognizable world. The city was overgrown. Buildings were torn down, and what was left was claimed by nature. Vines and trees sprung out of broken windows, and the streets were littered with cars that will never run again. It looked as if the apocalypse happened while I was slumbering deep in my coma. How? What happened? Shh. The council will tell you soon enough. My girlfriend refused to answer. She just wheeled me along, and we soon came to a gate that was covered in vines. Inside was a massive garden overlooked by a very old mansion. But somehow, it's the only thing from miles that looked as if somebody was living there. The moment I got there, swarms of people greeted me. They had tears in their eyes, and they put wreaths of flowers around my neck. They followed behind me as Haley pushed my wheelchair. Like a weird procession, we ended up in the grounds behind the mansion. And there, there were a bunch of women who looked like they were in charge. As soon as they saw me, they smiled and ran towards me. They bent down and hugged me and welcomed me. Please, come. We prepared a feast for you. What was this weird new reality? What happened while I was gone? And who are all of these girls? One of the women in the council must have seen the confusion in my eyes, so she took my hand and squeezed it. You probably have a lot of questions, but first, you need to regain your strength. First, we feast, and we did. There was singing and dancing, and all the delicious food I could have ever imagined. Girls skipped about playing games and celebrating. Celebrating me. But why? I was just some guy who got into an accident. And speaking of guys, where are they? Why is everyone here a girl? I finally got my answers after dinner. As sunset came and the sky darkened, I realized there were no more streetlights. We used lanterns and candles and the bonfire. They started telling me the story of what happened just a week after I slipped into a coma. Some politician was caught on camera hurting a maid. The scandal grew, and it turned out he was also caught for kidnapping women and selling them to other countries as servants. For decades, he got rich off of hurting girls and treating them like cattle. But nobody did anything about it. The scandal rocked my country. But even after all the things that were exposed about the crimes against women, the politician kept his position. He didn't even get convicted. He just continued on and made more money. That was when a militant group of women started their movement. They started out as feminists. All they wanted was to do good, to make the world a better place for women. But then, a splinter group within their organization formed. These group of women began demanding things that the feminist movement didn't even agree with. They pushed for female supremacy and not equality. I mean, sure, in many ways, women are better than men. That's why I love them so much. But this group of women took it to the absolute extreme. They defined themselves as ultra-feminists, and they called themselves the Karens. The Karens started storming stores and businesses, looting and pillaging and capturing men wherever they went. They wreaked havoc all over the country, and soon, the men were even afraid to go out of their houses. The fact that women were finally taking control drove their cause, and more women joined them, until most of the women in the country supported them. They stormed government buildings, 
army bases, and airports. They took all the men in power and replaced them with women. Until finally, they installed the leader of their group as president. Nobody even knows her name. She was simply known as the manager. Soon, the Karens attacked everyone who opposed them. They kept some men for a while, to use them as servants and construction workers. The Karens tore everything down, anything that was ever built by a man. And then, they built new buildings and places, all built manually and with the earth. That's how the cities of my country achieved close to zero carbon emissions. Cars were banned. Everyone either biked, walked, or rode horses. It was utopia for a few months. It was like being in the Garden of Eden, the council said. But then, everything changed. The Karens pushed for more and more extreme laws against men. And anyone who disobeyed was punished. Even women. Soon, men began to disappear, little by little. People's husbands, sons and grandsons were taken away. Nobody knows where the Karens took them, but it sparked a civil war. The Karens fought against the women who rebelled, and the council was formed. The council wanted a world where everyone was equal, where both men and women were respected. They fought against the crimes that the Karens had done, but the Karens won, and many cities were destroyed, like the one I'm living in now. This was the last stronghold of the council. A year ago, they attacked the city. A hundred thousand men were either captured or died. But after the flames had gone down and the fighting was over, they found me and my girlfriend. We were untouched by the fire. Since then, my girlfriend stayed by my side. And with the council, she waited. You are the chosen one. You are the last man in the country. And with you lies the hope of the future generations. What? Hold up. What do you mean I'm the chosen? I'm the last man alive? Yes. You were untouched by all the fighting. There must be a reason. You are the chosen one. That makes absolutely no sense. What about the rest of the world? We don't know. The Karens have forbidden any access to the country. There is no way to contact anyone outside. No phone lines, no internet, no planes or boats. Just as she said that, I saw a trail of smoke far into the horizon. There, you see? They shoot down any intruders. I didn't know how to process it at all. Was this actually real? Am I being pranked? Where are the cameras? But I searched everywhere and found none. I lived as normally as I could, but the new normal was tough to get used to. Sure, I was waited on and treated like a king, but I just couldn't believe every guy I'd ever known was gone. My buddy just had his birthday when all this happened. Was he alive somewhere? It was while I was sitting by a pond away from the council's mansion that I was attacked. Someone grabbed me from behind and they started choking me. And another one came in front of me and pointed a sword at my neck. Samantha? When the woman heard my voice and saw the look on my face, she recognized me too. It was my ex. She and I dated ages ago, and we went to prom together. Samantha couldn't bear to kidnap me or kill me. She told me they were sent as assassins by the Karens. They knew the council was protecting a man, but they had no idea who it was. And it was too much of a coincidence for Samantha to not believe our meeting was destined. No matter how hard she tried, she couldn't justify killing me. You were the best boyfriend I ever had. You were always so nice to me, even when all the guys at school bullied me. Samantha convinced her friend to get out of the Karens, and from then on, they stayed with us. I grew very close to Samantha and Jill. They joined me and Haley frequently for dinner. And one day, the council announced that I was to pick three wives. I didn't understand what was happening, but apparently, being the only man left, I had to repopulate the country so we could fight back against the Karens someday. I couldn't complain. I married Haley, Samantha, and Jill. But the council also named me the husband of every woman that was there. They said it was so that no woman felt left out. And should we need a bigger army, I could be with the other woman too. I lived like a king, and Haley, Samantha, and Jill were my queens. We worked tirelessly every day to bring down the Karens. But we haven't succeeded yet. One day, I hope my country will rise again.